Hello and welcome to the 2019 Bank of the Year Awards. I'm joined this evening by the Banker's Editor, Brian Kaplan at the Grand Sheraton Park Lane. Brian, uh, this year's awards is one of our strongest in terms of new markets, in terms of entries, but also in terms of some of the initiatives detailed in the submissions, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we always get a fantastic response to uh, the Bank of the Year Awards. Uh, we look at the banks across a whole range of categories, at technology, at marketing initiatives, and of course at the numbers, you know, which is all very important. Uh, we've had a fantastic response this year. Um, we're waiting to kind of go on stage and start presenting the awards, but obviously behind the scenes, you know, the judges have been working very hard going through the entries and making sure that everything is exactly as it should be and then making that final decision about who wins. And what's interesting this year is really the backdrop um, to the global economy has been a bit softer. We've seen trade tensions between the US and China. We've seen negative interest rates um, sort of, you know, um, increasing across Europe and, and elsewhere. Um, how has that impacted sort of the, the global banking sector? Yeah, I mean, it's for the last few years and it carries on, uh, it's been tough to be in banking uh, in, in most parts of the world, certainly in the major economies in Europe, the US, and uh, perhaps less so in, in, in Asia and, and China. And as you say, I mean, uh, low interest rates are not good for banks. Um, they've had a massive regulation uh, to take on board since the financial crisis. And then of course the other thing is um, that we're now looking at getting all this new technology in, on board, and that's a massive investment. Well, that's an interesting point because um, one of the big themes across many of the submissions and many of the markets this year was that drive towards digitization. What were the big takeaways for you from those entries? Yeah, clearly every bank now has to have uh, a strategy for digital transformation um, and they've got to move away from you know, legacy architecture and get themselves you know, fit just like they were uh, a kind of Facebook or uh, a modern you know, tech company. That's a real challenge for banks and they've obviously got all the compliance and regulatory issues to go along with that. Um, at the same time, uh, and uh, by the way, we saw some lots of impressive entries and very exciting things that people are doing all over the world and joining up with fintechs to kind of make sure they've got the, the latest customer f uh, facing platforms in place. But then just as you get one set of technology in place, you know, the horizon opens up and there's, there's more things to do. So there's robotics, you know, there's blockchain, there's artificial in intelligence, and there's quantum computing. So I think it's a, a very interesting time from that aspect to be in banking. Uh, we were very impressed by the high quality of entries that we had this year, and we'd be looking to see how they take along those technologies further in future entries and future awards. Well, looking forward to the awards tonight, and uh, thank you for your time, Brian. Thanks, James. The Bank of the Year, Asia Pacific, the entire region, and the winner is the Agricultural Bank of China. Simply.